Alrighty, so what we are going to do today is we are going to do a versus video between the Ryobi brushless uh, quarter inch hex impact driver versus the rigid quarter inch hex impact driver. Now both of these tools are brushless and both of them are supported by a special battery. Uh, the rigid is powered by the octane and the Ryobi is powered by the HP system. So both of these have a circuit inside that interacts with the battery to uh, enhance the power for when it's needed. So this is going to be a good one, but first we need a neutral. We are going to see on how these perform with a regular 2 amp hour battery. Then we're going to jump up to the 3 amp hour octane and the 3 amp hour HP. Now both of these systems have 6 amp hour octane and 6 amp hour HP and they also have 9 amp hour octane and 9 amp hour HP but in a future video we're going to do a versus video uh, with these and the 9 amp hour but this video is to get a neutral for the 2 amp hours then we're going to jump up to the 3 amp hours in this video alrighty so the rigid this is model number R86039 Quarter hex impact, uh, 18 volt system. It does have speed settings. This actually says it has six speed settings. Uh, there is screw. Uh, uh, I guess that's uh, fastener, screw, and then the speed for each one of those. Which we're just going to use the speed three. There we go. And on a uh, speed. I guess on speed one, it is zero to 750 RPM. Speed two, zero to 2200 RPM. On speed three, zero to 3000 RPM. And uh, 39 impacts per minute. Now I'll, I'll put the torque in right now. And so this is gonna be a good one because the Octane system is supposed to majorly enhance the tool. And this tool is gonna be an interesting one to see. And this is my first time using it on this channel. So, so that's the rigid. The Ryobi is a model number P238, 18 volt system. And uh, there are sp uh, three speed settings. It's by a switch. It is not electronic like the rigid is. Which, honestly, I prefer the, the switch because it's very easy to do. If they had a precision one, I'd rather have a, a symbol of a screw. And then I can do that. You know, because with, with gloves on, it is hard to hit the buttons on the electronic one. All right, so this is uh, speed one. It goes to zero to... Huh. This one actually does not give you... I'll have to put it in right now. This one only gives you the R RPMs for speed three. Uh, and it is zero to 3,200 RPMs and zero to 4,000 impacts per minute, which that is 100 impacts more than the rigid. I'll put the torque of this in right now. Both of these had speed settings with variable, variable trigger. And the one thing I love about Ryobi that no one else has is the magnet tray. This magnet tray I use a lot every time I use a Ryobi tool because I, I like that because then I, I could if I have three screws I have a magnet tray to put on there or more screws or a bit you know just an extra space to where you don't have to carry something so that's that I I don't know why uh, other companies don't have a magnet tray somewhere but a magnet tray is essential when it comes to carrying a couple of extra things so let's get to the let's get to the log well, we will be using Hilti Hex Bits for this. I have a video of this coming. <laughs> this kit cost $96. It's absolutely crazy. So, I have both of them in 5 sixteenths, so we will, we will be using these. Alrighty, we are going to do the rigid first. Is the rigid collet just push in? Yes, it is. And that's good. That's good, but first we are going to do a 2 amp hour regular battery to get a control to find out where we stand. But we are going to start with the rigid first. Right there is good. Speed is on 3. Alright, so ready? Go. <laughs> Ah. 
time. Is the Ryobi's Collet pushing? Yes, it is. That feature is awesome to have. It's like, I don't know why that they even make impacts where you don't push that in. All right, so ready? Go. Time. All right, they both run this, uh, the highest speed. All right, so we are gonna take them out. Ryobi is gonna take Rigid's out and Rigid is gonna take Ryobi's out. It is Rigid's turn. All right, so ready? Go. Time. All right, I changed the camera angle. All righty, so let's jump over to the HP and Octane. So the Octane for the Rigid. And the HP for the Ryobi. We're gonna use the uh, Rigid first. The battery is full. We are gonna drive in four Timberlock screws and then take uh, individually, then take them all out at once. I'm not gonna waste any time per screw, I'm just gonna immediately go into the next one. All right, so ready, go. Time. All right, next one. Ready, go. Time. All right, so ready, go. Ooh, oh, man, I messed up. Can I take that out, please? Yes, I can. That's at the correct height. All right, so one more. Ready. Alrighty, so that is the rigid. We are gonna put four in for the Ryobi. Uh, battery is full. All right, so ready, go. Time. You can tell right off the bat that the Ryobi anvil activated a lot sooner than the rigid, which is actually a bad thing. So the rigid so far, I can tell it is actually uh, more powerful than the Ryobi. But the timing would tell. All right, so ready, go. Time. Do another one. Ready, go. That one went a little crazy. Right here. Ready, go. Time. Alrighty, so Rigid is gonna take out Ryobi's and Ryobi's is gonna take out Rigid's. All right, so ready, go. Oh. Crazy one for in and out. All right, so we're gonna take four out at once. I'm gonna go to the next one as fast as possible. Ready, go. All right, and 
When it comes to reversing, it sounded like the Ryobi needed the anvil less than the Rigid did. So, the Rigid needed the anvil less when it was driving it in, but the Ryobi needed it less for when it took them out. That is a result right there. Alrighty, so... We got a 4 inch. Alright, so speed 3. Good to go. Alright, so ready? Go. Time. And that is that. All right, so let's put a four inch in for Ryobi. Chew it up around the edges. We'll see. All right, let's put a four inch in. All right, so forward, speed three. All right, ready, go. And that is that. All right, so rigid. Wow, you too? This Makita adapter is getting a little chewed up. There we go. Battery, once again, is at three bars. All right, so ready, go. Time. All right, so ready. Time. All right, so we have two six-inch lags. We're, uh, they're going to drive one each. We're going to save the ten-inch lags for the six amp hour and nine amp hour test for the octane and HP. All right, so ready, go. Anvil skipped a little bit. Please come out easily. Darn it. Yeah, this this Makita is uh is uh starting to wear out. It's starting to get stuck into the uh the collet. Alright, so ready? Go. Hopefully these can do it because I really don't want to go get another branded battery to take these out. Alright, so ready, go. Time. Alright, Rigid was able to do it. Alright, let's uh, see if Ryobi's up for the challenge. All right, so ready, go. Time. And there we have it. That is the versus video for these two. I do not know what, what the results are, but both of these are actually pretty powerful. So when it comes to these these brands and power, these really are up there with Milwaukee and DeWalt, but the difference is Milwaukee and DeWalt will majorly outlast Rigid or Ryobi. You know, like cuz if this is designed for the semi-contractor slash DIYer, you know, but DeWalt and Milwaukee are designed for people that use their, their tools all day and every day. Now, this was a fun test to do. 
more videos are coming up. Like I said, we will be doing the 6 amp hour batteries uh, in a future video along with the 9 amp hour batteries. Because, you know, you, you won't always need that type of battery. A lot of the times we'll just need our regular ones. But for the times when you do need the power and you don't want to get a better, uh, a different tool, you have the option to increase the power of your, of your tool. So please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified of future videos. And this is Dave Nicholas. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.